Hi, everybody. What I'd like to talk about for a few minutes today is the, uh, uh, is the so-called moon hoax, the, uh, the belief that we never actually landed on the moon. It's a fascinating uh, subject. It's one that uh, is silly in a whole lot of ways uh, and one that doesn't deserve much attention, but for some reason it gets a lot more attention than one might think. There's a couple of reasons for that, and uh, one of those is we as a society love conspiracies. Um, is there anybody here who, uh, uh, who, who thinks that uh, Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone? Uh, at, uh, okay. There's a few of us in that category, but there's a whole lot of people that don't. And if you watch movies like uh, Oliver Stone's JFK, uh, you will uh, get a sense that, uh, that, that there was this huge, massive conspiracy of apparently everybody else in the country. Um, <laughs> But be that as it may, we love this sort of thing, and, and we've always loved it as a society. Conspiracies go back to the very birth of the American Republic. Uh, it, it, has, it has dominated a lot of thought processes. It has also uh, led to some very serious results. Uh, I mean, quite frankly, the British colonists in North America were responding to a, uh, a belief that a conspiracy was underway to rob them of their rights as Englishmen, and they undertook the American Revolution as a result of that. So it did motivate a lot of people in that particular setting. That usually doesn't go that far, but, uh, but nonetheless, we love to think that there's this powerful, uh, malevolent, and uh, 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 a conspiratorial group of people that are out there controlling things, and we somehow don't have any sense of our own destiny. A fascinating uh, dynamic from a psychological perspective. There's been lots of work that's been done on that. Well, the moon hoax is one example of this particular problem in American history. It, it, it doesn't take very long uh, to find evidence of people talking about this, even at the time of the first moon landing in the summer of 1969. And we're going to be celebrating the 40th anniversary of that event in just uh, uh, two or three weeks now, about three weeks from now. Y you know, you can't necessarily believe that. Bill Clinton, uh, in his autobiography, after he left the presidency, he said that he was working as a helper to a carpenter in the summer of 1969. And that carpenter said basically the same thing. Ah, you know, those guys in Hollywood, they can fake anything. Uh, look at all the stuff that they've done previously. They did this as well. Now, those kinds of, of uh, disbelief is really built upon naivete and, and not really necessarily thinking about it too long and hard in those particular cases. But there are others who, uh, uh, who um, emerged fairly quickly thereafter to, uh, to question it uh, pretty thoroughly. And, um, and sometimes they're doing it for economic gain. Sometimes they're doing it for fame. Sometimes they honestly believe what they say. Not all the time, I might add. Uh, but uh, they also then uh, proceed to try to convince others of this particular idea. And um, uh, lots of news reports about this at the time uh, that, uh, that suggested that they weren't able to believe. I mean, there was one uh, particular news story that said they talked to a woman who lived in Atlanta, and she said, well, I know that these guys didn't go to the moon because my television set can't get the television stations from New York, how on earth can they get, earth literally, how on earth can they get broadcast from the moon? That's a, that's, that is, a, again, another statement of naivete about the technology. Uh, the first serious questioning of the moon landing came from uh, a fellow by the name of Bill Casing in 1974, who wrote a a book actually it was more of a pamphlet that said, you know, we never really actually went to the moon, and there's all of these reasons why. And he's, he's really got kind of three basic arguments. They've not really been modified much since that time. Uh, they may have been elaborated on a little bit, but basically it's, it's, it's three types of evidence that people talk about. The first is what they think of as anomalies in the still photography that uh, was taken on the lunar surface. That's the first thing. The second thing is the, uh, 
the, the sense that radiation, especially radiation in the uh, Van Allen radiation belts, uh, would kill any human being that went into those. Uh, and consequently, they couldn't have gone for that reason. And, uh, and the third reason was is that just in, in the overall scheme of things, technology does not exist sufficient to allow us to go anywhere else uh, in the solar system. Um, and, and, and he had a few pieces of evidence. He had a lot of questions that he raised. But, but that was essentially the sum total of, of his argument. It wasn't very sophisticated or very lengthy. It's been, as I said, modified, added to, adapted slightly since that time. Um, and, and most people don't believe it, uh, quite frankly. If you take any poll at any time where a question along the lines of, do you, let's take this poll right now. How many of you think we landed on the moon? Okay. Anybody want to raise their hand saying, no, I don't think we did? Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. Peter Jacob back there, always a disbeliever. Anyway, um, and, 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 what, and what you get typically when you ask the question about uh, about the polls are, it's something in the neighborhood of 6% or so who say, yeah, I question this. Now, that's a pretty small percentage. And remember, the margin of error for most of these polls is 3 to 5%. So uh, it's conceivable that it's a very minuscule amount. The, um, the other point that's been made by a number of people who do polling for a living is that, you know, you can basically get 6% of the public to say anything. Um, and, uh, and so for that reason, uh, you know, you can't necessarily believe it. Um, but there are some interesting developments that have been taking place over the last few years, especially in the, in the era uh, since the Internet has come on, online in, in the 1990s up to the present. There has been a proliferation of information about the so-called moon hoax. Um, I myself have been branded one of the conspirators uh, since I, I'm, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very proud of that, by the way. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, since I do accept the fact that the astronauts did indeed walk on the moon uh, and that we did it six times and that we had one failure. Uh, unfortunately, we brought the crew of Apollo 13 home alive, just barely. Everybody saw the movie, I assume. And... Um, uh, but be that as it may, we want to question this kind of stuff. And with the ability uh, uh, to communicate in ways that hadn't existed previously, you can communicate very easily. And the barrier for entry into publication on the Internet is so low. I mean, essentially, it's anybody with a laptop um, that, uh, you know, and, 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 a, and a, some sort of phone line can do this, uh, you find that there's been this broad proliferation of these, of these particular arguments. Some of the, uh, the websites, and by the way, if you do a search, you're going to find over a thousand websites uh, that discuss the moon hoax. Most of the time, um, they debunk it, but a not insignificant number of the time, they are conspiracy uh, websites. And, and that's pretty easy to go find those and feel free uh, if you want to, uh, to engage in that particular activity. The, uh, uh, and, and so that barrier for entry for publication has been very low, and the ability to communicate across these various groups with this specialty audience has become much, much greater. Uh, all of this probably doesn't mean anything until it got raised to an entirely new level when Fox in 2001... Some of you may remember this particular so-called documentary um, with, the, with the title, Did We Land or Did We Go? And uh, it, uh, it, uh, it really lays out the conspiracy theories that uh, exist, existed at that time and then a few that have been kind of developed uh, since uh, more fully. And uh, it, it, was, it, was, um, it was not one of those we report, you decide things by any stretch of the imagination. It was the conspiracy theorists with an hour of, of main uh, 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 network television prime time to make their case. And they, they succeeded in convincing, I shouldn't say convincing, at least raising doubt in a whole lot of people's minds that would never have thought of it at the time. I was at NASA at that point. I was chief historian. And immediately when the Fox special aired, uh, I hesitate to call it a news special, um, 
when it aired, we started getting inquiries from mostly uh, parents and from teachers who said, I need something that will enable me to talk to my kids who saw this silly thing, and I don't know how to answer it. So they... Um, uh, so at NASA, we developed a fact sheet and a variety of other things. Up until this time, NASA's official response was, we will not dignify this nonsense with, a, with any kind of rebuttal. And that might have been fine for, um, uh, you know, in the pre-Internet era when it was a relatively small thing and the communication uh, capabilities were not what they were later. But when Fox certainly makes it available to, to millions of people, then there, then there rises this issue. And, um, and so we started to develop a set of fact sheets, uh, a set of standard responses that we started to use in this context. And we weren't alone there. We, were, we had a lot of folks who were outside of NASA at the time who did the same sort of thing, saying, we, we can't allow this to go unanswered. And uh, as a result of that, there's been a lot of, of counter-argument that's been made in the last few years. Now, some of this uh, is, is silly, and some of it is not. The part that is, is silly is when you've got things like Bart Seibrell in, I think it was August of 2002, and Bart Seibrell is a, a, a conspiracy theorist. He likes to make documentaries, or at least he calls them documentaries, and, um, uh, and then he wants to confront the astronauts who walked on the moon. Uh, he has been known to shove a Bible in there in front of them and say, swear on the Bible that you walked on the moon, and some have done it. Um, he uh, confronted Buzz Aldrin at a hotel in, uh, in Los Angeles one day, and some of you are laughing already because you know what I'm going to talk about. And, uh, and, and he pulled his standard sort of stunt and... Uh, and when Buzz kind of just ignored him, he said, he, he starts talking, and you can see it. And by the way, if you want to watch the video, it's on, the, it's on YouTube. Um, he, uh, he starts saying, you are a liar, a cheat, and a no account. And at that point, Buzz gave him a left hook that uh, sent him reeling. <laughs> and he immediately turns around to his cameraman and says, did you get that on tape? <laughs> uh, anyway, um, that's the silly part. The serious part is that when we think about history, we have to ask ourselves the question, how do we know what we know? The fancy term for that, and some of you know that, is epistemology. And, and how do you think that you know something happened someplace? Is it, if we witness it by our eyes, does that mean that we know this? Uh, if we didn't witness it, do we accept the accounts of eyewitnesses? Do we accept the accounts that we see through the visual record, either still, still, motion, or still imagery or motion pictures or something like that over television or the Internet or whatever? How do you decide what is real and what is not? That is a fundamental question, and it's a fundamental question throughout history and certainly up to this present time. Um, and as we recede farther and farther from the experiences of Apollo, and I see some in the audience who, who were alive when Apollo took place. Now, I was a kid. I was listening to the broadcast of, of, uh, of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin on the moon in July of 1969. But I got to tell you, I was sitting on the hood of a car with the car radio on, and there was a girl sitting beside me, and... What was taking place on the moon was not my primary focus. But I did hear it. That's, that's not true for those of you who didn't experience it. Half of the world's population has been born since we stopped going to the moon. In the truest sense of the term, it is history for them. Uh, and it is in that community who have not experienced it in any way, shape, or form where you get the largest amount of questioning. Um, there were polls that were done in the mid part of this decade, about 2004, 2005 is the last time I've seen this poll, in which the question was asked, do you believe we landed on the moon? Or do you question whether or not we landed on the moon? That is the way the, way the question read. And uh, the majority of the people, and when you aggregate everything, about 6% say, I question it. But when you divide it up by age group, into the 18 to 24-year-olds who were surveyed in that particular poll, 27% of the, 
questioned it. That is statistically significant. Uh, and, and that raises interesting questions in my mind as to what that means and, uh, and how we deal with it. I think it has something to do with the fact that they didn't witness it at all. It is history. Um, I think it has something to do with the, with the demise of trust in government and institutions in general. My kids who are in that category are actually a little older than that now. Uh, will tell you with, with a surety that they will never see Social Security or any of those other sorts of things. They do not believe they will be there for them. And, and that is a statement of distrust of a social contract that's been in place now for a long time, nearly a century. Um, with that kind of distrust, I would suggest to you that it's easier for them to question these sorts of things. Uh, the reality is, I think, and just to bring this to a close, uh, it would be the coolest thing in the world to go back to the moon just to prove we went there the first time. <laughs> and with that, I will end my comments. If you all have questions or, uh, or barbs, feel free. Thank you for listening to this edition of Ask an Expert. A companion question and answer session for this lecture may also be available. For a schedule of upcoming Ask an Expert lectures at the museum, please visit www.nasm.si.edu.